And as I do that, then I'm going to have the joy that is a result of that because verse 11 says, These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so joy comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Rejoice. Rejoice in your relationship with him. Now, when he says in verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another. Notice how he says it. Love one another as I have loved you. And then he tells us how he's loved us. And this I want to spend a moment looking at. Verse 13. He says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. The essence of love is sacrificial. Laying, laying down one's life is a supreme test and expression of God's love. That gives me the understanding that it's not all about me. I think a lot of people have the wrong impression that life revolves around them from the moment they're born and they just make a squeak or they make a mess. Everybody caters to them. Everybody does from the time that they're infant into the time that they're toddlers into the time that they're going into preschool into the time that they go into kindergarten. Everything is about them. Somebody's catering to them constantly, changing them, bathing them, feeding them, caring for them, speaking to them, just fully paying all attention to them all the time. And that's how every human being is basically raised normally with somebody paying a lot of attention, talking to them, showing them a lot of attention. And in the more loving homes, that's that's a constant. Everything you do is just great. I mean, even when you're potty trained, your mom said, oh, that's a wonderful thing. It really wasn't a wonderful thing. It's wonderful that they weren't doing that in their pants anymore, but that's not necessarily a wonderful thing. But we make them feel so good. Look at you. You're just a great thing. You're the best thing. You're the smartest thing. You're the best looking thing. You're the greatest thing. And so they grow up saying, that's right, I am. And then they have horrible relationships with other people because they're constantly trying to convince people that they indeed are the best thing that they've ever met. And we don't know how to sacrifice. We don't learn balance. We don't learn how to do that very well. And so... One of the things and one of the lessons we need to learn is it's not all about me. Love, in essence, is sacrificial. That's what Jesus is saying. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. You know, you're dating a girl from a man's perspective. You're dating a girl. And you tell her things that you want her to believe. You may be sincere at the moment. Honey, anything you want, I'll do for you. I'll do anything. I love everything you love. I mean, as a matter of fact, it's amazing to me how alike we are in our tastes. You know, when I used to date before I uh, got married, before I met Marie, whenever I'd date, you know, whatever it is the girl liked, that, that, that happened to be the thing that I liked the most. You know, whatever it was. You want to go and get something to eat? Oh, yeah. What do you like to eat? Well, I like to eat chow mein. You know what? That's my favorite. I love chow mein. It's the best. It's the best. I can't believe it. Soulmates for sure. Mm-hmm. What kind of books do you read? Well, I like to read this. Oh, I do too. I love to read. What, you know, what kind of music? Well, I like country western. Hot dog. Me too. You know, oh, it's just one thing after another. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. And then you get married. And then they find out the real person. Turn off that country music. I hate it, man. I don't like chow mein. And before you know it, they discover who you really are. When Marie and I started dating and all, and ultimately we got married, I made my mind up that what I was going to do was be the real person with her. I didn't want to be the pretend. I didn't want to be that guy who was just acting like I liked the things that she liked. And so instead of calling her up and saying, where do you want to go? I'd say, I, I want to go somewhere. Do you want to go with me? And she found out who I really was by the places I went, by the foods that I ate, by the friends that I had. She discovered those things, the music I would play. She discovered all of those things because I got tired of trying to put on like I was something else. When in reality, once they discover what I was, they didn't like me. So I thought you might as well dislike me from the beginning. I like this. I like this. I like this. This is who I really am. And I learned to do that. But not everybody does. And sometimes they even get married pretending. Sometimes they still are that way. It was your dating and you say, look at anything you want, I'll do for you, honey. I mean, if you're thirsty and I was in the desert and I'm barefooted and it was a mile to walk across that blazing sand, I would do it for you because I love you. Then you get married. She says, can you get me a glass of wine? You say, so who's sitting on your lap? You get it yourself. And while you're there, make me a sandwich. <laughs> and we're just not real, are we? But the Lord speaks and he says, listen, this is the essence of love. It's sacrifice. 
And, and I want you to know what love is because greater love has no man than this and to lay down one's life for his friends. And that's the essence of it, you see. I mean, very often we think of love and we speak about it in such glowing terms. But when Jesus boiled it down, he said, God demonstrated his love towards men in that while Jesus, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died on the cross for us. That's what love is. And it's interesting how that when Paul was illustrating what love is to husbands, he used Jesus' sacrifice as an example. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, when Paul is writing to the church of Ephesus, he said to husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So husbands, he's saying, be sacrificial towards your wives. In Galatians, when Paul was writing to the church there in Galatia, in chapter 1, verse 4, he said, Jesus gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. Once again, sacrifice, voluntary lay down of his life for us to rescue us. My son David loves his nephew and loves his niece, my grandson and my granddaughter. He loves Josiah. He'll have Josiah spend the night with him and and they just hang around. He loves them. Josiah is five years old. And he loves Sophia. Sophie, she's nine months old today. He loves his little, little niece very much. I mean, you'll see my son carrying her around and everything. And he loves her and plays with her. And, and just, he'll just do anything for her until she messes her diaper. And then suddenly it's mom. You know, he'll call up either. He'll call grandma or he'll call... Uh, my daughter Corinne, come and get the baby, it's time, you know. I mean, he'll do anything except change the diaper, you know. He'll do anything. But he says, you know, there's certain lines that I cannot cross. And so he hands the baby to the mom and off he goes to do whatever it is. And he says, he says, you know what, he goes, it's, it's neat being a, a, an uncle because you can give the baby back to the to the parents. And that's true, we understand that. But you see... As a parent, I learned some things about sacrifice because I didn't want to get up early in the morning when the baby was crying and needing someone, so I didn't. No, I didn't want to do that, but you do. You don't want to take them to the hospital at, at 2 in the morning, but you do. When my daughter Karini was just a 3 or 4 month old baby, I do remember, and I've shared this with you, how she had a temperature over 100 and um, and we called the emergency and uh, doctor and they said, you need to bring that baby in right now. And my little girl was just boiling. She had over 100 temperature, 100 degree temperature. And, and for an infant, that's a very dangerous thing. And so we took her in and we were brand new uh, parents and we had her wrapped up because we were going out at night. And the minute we got there, the nurse said, take that blanket off that baby. She's already too hot. You're cr increasing her. We didn't know that, so we're learning. And so they, they take her in and they do the little exam and, and give different things for babies to, to bring that temperature down and all. But the, but the doctor said to us, listen, if this baby's temperature is still where it is in the next two hours, you're going to need to put her in cold water. Now, every parent in here knows what that is. You're going to need to put that baby in cold water. You've got to bring her temperature down. It's dangerous for her to have a temperature that high. And so what do we do? Well, we take her home and, and we take her temperature. And as we're taking her temperature, it doesn't go down. It doesn't go down for two hours and it's actually going up. And I'm really concerned. And so we turn on the bath water and we fill up that tub. And I've got my little baby just a few months old and, and I'm holding her in my hands. And, and I kneel there next to the tub and I start to place her in the water to, to you know, reduce her temperature. And, and my Corinne just begins to scream. She, she never stopped. But she begins to scream and, and kicking her little feet and just fighting that water and, she, and grabbing hold of me. And, and like any other dad, you know what I did? I got in the water with her. I just I climbed in that water and I held her next to me. You know, I held her. Because if you've got to go in there and I'm going in with you, that's the way it is. That's what love is. That's what love does. Did I want to climb in that ice water? Are you kidding me? Where's her mom when you need her, right? And, <laughs> of course not. I didn't want to climb. Did I? Yes. Yes. Would I now? Yes. Of course. It's my baby. 